we celebrate the second weekend of Advent. Peace. This desired yet elusive idea is not found in politics, the news, social media, addictions, or shallow relationships. Peace is only found through Jesus Christ. When we are at peace with God, then God's peace may be, with, may be in us. In O Holy Night by Adolf Adam, there is a line that depicts the peace of God as a thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices. It's a breath of crisp mountain air, a sublime sub sunset, a breakthrough on a difficult project, or a baby's first cry after a hard night of labor. It's peace, a peace that settles deep into the bones and still and stills an anxious soul. Today marks the second week of Advent, a season recognized by the church around the world as a time to prepare our hearts and lives to welcome the coming of Jesus Christ at Christmas. We track this season by engaging in several rhythms, one of them being to light candles, one for each week leading up to Christmas Day. Today, we light the second candle, traditionally called the candle of peace. Old Testament prophecies in the Bible were written for the, their immediate context, but some of these prophecies were also a foreshadow to Jesus. At Christmas, we read these prophecies to remind us of who Jesus is and why Jesus came to us at Christmas. Isaiah 9, 6 is a popular scripture read during, used in Advent. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty, mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Jesus came as a child born to us with the eternal government of heaven on his shoulders as his responsibility. Jesus is in charge. Where Jesus rules, there is peace. Like a legend of old, Jesus rules with authority and power and treats those who live in the kingdom of Christ with kindness and honor. As Micah 5, 4 and 5 says, He will stand and shepherd his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And they will live securely, for then his greatness will reach to the ends of the earth, and he will be our peace. Let's pray together. Jesus, our peace, be near to us when our lives seem afar from peaceful. Assure us of your presence with us. We need you, Holy Spirit, and we cry out to you for help. Be our gentle shepherd, our wise king, and the peace of our hearts, we pray. Amen. We are continuing our Christmas series, the Songs of Christmas this week. We're thankful that you've joined us online and we are praying for your families, for their health uh, this week as we're unable to gather together. But I love the heart of this body of believers as even when we're away, we're still unified and we are uh, so thankful that um, you are part of this group of believers. Today, we're going to be jumping into the classic Joy to the World. In 1719, Isaac Watts wrote the words to what we now sing as joy to the world, but not as a beloved Christmas song, but as a personal reflection of his personal Bible study of Psalm 98. He wrote verse 2, it says, Joy to the world, the Savior reigns, let men their songs employ, while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains, repeat the sounding joy, repeat the sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding 
joy. Last week we talked about songs that we had on repeat in our head and we we reminded ourselves that peace on earth meant that we could live lives of peace and that we could that we wouldn't have to have or we couldn't have the peace of God until we had the peace with God. Today my question church is what song is your soul singing this Christmas season? uh, This year has been a year like none other. We've had we faced many challenges and and here we are uh, at what someone has phrased, phrased the most wonderful time of the year. Uh, the song reminds us, Joy to the World, that God's creation is repeating his glory. And it calls us to let men their songs employ. Our Savior reigns. But where does this year and this season in specific find you? What song is repeating in your heart? I've told you before, uh, growing up, my dad, he, um, he, we played this song so much that he just absolutely hates it. I, was, I, was, I saw him this past weekend, and uh, I played it for him, and, and you could just see him start cringing. But Kenny Rogers and Dolly Parton sang one of the most vastly underrated Christmas classics ever with bells on. And the song, it starts off, and it's like, ding, dong, dong. It's, it's just wonderful. Those opening notes bring a reminder to me of family to my dad it's like oh that song of that re- that reminder of family of decorating and joy but that's kind of the norman rockwell version because we all know the real one is that when that song is played today for me and my my little uh, squad at home there is frustration with tangled lights that you were ang- that that you were angry with last year and you're angry with your last year self because you should have put them up correctly There are broken ornaments, light strands that were working when you check them in the wall, but then you put them on the tree and you start decorating and they don't work now. You grin and you grit your teeth and you sing, it's the most wonderful time of the year. I'm kidding, kind of, kind of, but for real, sometimes that happens. Some of you, we're going to show a video here pretty quick. Some of you are just jolly old tinselfied Christmas caroling elves. And you, kind of like this lady in this video who went viral, Um, you are just a, a happy old person. Let's, let's watch that video. A day or two ago, I thought I'd take a ride, and soon Miss Fanny Bride was seated by my side. The horse was lean and lame, misfortune seemed as what. We got into a trip to fake, and then we got a sod. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure I have someone in my family that um, could do that today. But maybe that's you. If that's you, go ahead and put it in the comments. Uh, say, hey, that, that's me. I like to jingle all the way. Some of you, though, you have your lips snarled like one Elvis Aaron Presley. And, and when he starts singing the one song, I mean, he sings a lot of Christmas songs, but the one song where you have absolutely no mistake on who is singing or what song it is. And he goes, oh, oh that part right there. Um, Maybe some of you, you're having a, 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 a blue Christmas. Now, this is a hot take, and you can, you can shoot me later, but um, I don't think Elvis was that great of a singer. Um, there, I said it. I'm sorry. But he was a great entertainer, and I won't say what, 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 what is, anyway. But anyway, <laughs> I just don't think Elvis was that great of a singer. But some of you, if we go deeper, though, with so many losses, not only this year, but as you get older, you just lose more family, more friends, more loved ones. Some of you may be sitting in this season feeling blue and sad. You've lost those who once sat at your table and those who held wonder, you held wonderful Christmas traditions with. I want you to know that I lament with you today. It's tough. Some of you are unable to see family and friends this year because of the virus. I lament with you. It's tough. I'm so sorry. It's okay. I want you to know that it's okay to mourn during this season. 
to be a little sad. It's okay. You don't have to be laughing all the time and be shaking jingle bells like that lady. That's not for all of us. Know this today, though. God is the God of all comfort. He mourns, with, he mourns the effects of sin and death with you. He is near us, and I want to remind you that in this tough season, what Psalm 118, starting in verse 22, says, it says, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. The cornerstone. Verse 23, this is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. Verse 24 says, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I tell you this from experience, from what I read, and from what I read in the scriptures, that if Jesus isn't the cornerstone of your life, if he's not the cornerstone of your decisions, of your attitude, if your life isn't sitting on the foundation that is a relationship with Jesus, with him at the center of who you are, you will never be filled with joy. You will never allow the fruit of the Spirit any chance to grow outside of the Holy Spirit empowering you each and every day. We can't find joy in a season. We can't find it in a song. The joy that is slow burning and long lasting is only found in our Father. That's what, that was what Isaac Watts was writing about from Psalm 98. I, we read it earlier. We'll read it again. It says, sing a new song to the Lord for he has done wonderful deeds. What has he done in your life? What is he doing? His right hand has won a mighty victory. His arm, his holy arm has shown his saving power. I'll ask again this morning, what song are you singing today? We're called to sing a new song because of the wonderful deeds that he has done in our lives. But I know that sometimes it doesn't feel like too many wonderful things are happening, happening to us. But let's look again. Look around your living rooms, on, on your couches this morning. Think about what good God has given you. The blessings that he has helped you with. I remember a song from growing up that was sung in our church by Jeff and Sherry Easter. It was called, Thank You, Lord, for Your Blessings on Me. The words went like this. You gave me your love, Lord, and a fine family. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. While the world looks upon me as I struggle alone, they say I have nothing, but they are so wrong. In my heart, I'm rejoicing at how I wish they could see. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. You've got a roof up above you. A good place to sleep. There's food on your table and shoes on your feet. I, I hear that song repeating in my heart today. What joy, and I wonder what joy we uproot by strangling all that God has done and is doing actively in your life with what you feel like he hasn't done. It's tough sometimes when we don't get the answers that we want, when, when bad things happen. But I wonder what joy you're struggling with because you're looking at just that and you're not paying any attention to what he has done. What blessings are you missing out? That maybe you've just taken for granted that should spark joy. But the enemy has you singing songs of misery at your, cur at your current circumstance. Sing a new song for the Lord today. Verse, verse 4 from that chapter it says, Shout to the Lord all the earth. Break out in praise and sing for joy. Sing your praise to the Lord with harp and with the harp and melodious song. With trumpets and the sound of the ram's horn. Make a joyful symphony before the Lord, the King. Make a joyful symphony, symphony before the Lord. That's an interesting choice of words, a symphony. You can't have a symphony with just a few instruments. If you did, I mean, you could have a one-man band, but it's not a symphony. We all need to be people of joy. That is what we're called to. 1 Peter chapter 1, starting in verse 3, says, All praise to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. It is by his great mercy that we have been born again. Because God raised Jesus Christ from the dead. Now we live with great expectation. Do you? Are you? Are you living with great expectation? We have this priceless inheritance. An inheritance that is kept for you in heaven. Pure and undefiled. Beyond the reach of change and decay. And through your faith, God is protecting you by his power. Until you have received the salvation. Which is ready to be revealed on the last day for all to see. Verse 6. So be truly glad. There is wonderful joy ahead, even though you must endure many trials for a little while. These trials will show that your faith is genuine. It is being tested as fire tests pur and purifies gold, though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials, it will bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus is revealed to the whole world. You love him even though you have not, you've never seen him. Though you do not see him now, you trust him. And you rejoice with a glorious, inexpressible joy. The reward for trusting him will be the salvation of your souls. Joy 
to the world. Our Savior reigns. Are you going to live with this joy and let him reign in your heart today? Because it's a daily decision. We, yes, we make it one time where we ask Christ to be the Lord of our lives, but we wake up and we're going to have to allow the Spirit to work in us today to bring about joy in our lives. We have to make that decision every day, I believe. Jesus didn't just come. We don't stop at just receiving the announcement that the Messiah had come. Wouldn't that be an awful ending to the story? Oh, the Messiah has come and we don't know anything else. We don't just stop there. We've got to make room, church. We have to make room in our hearts, in our lives, in our thoughts to live this joyful life. Having God at the center isn't optional. It's essential. It isn't optional. It's essential. When we face trials, the Savior reigns. This is the hope we live in today and especially in those days when we lose loved ones and we have those rough moments. Those who are on the outside of a saving faith in Jesus don't understand this and they see something that is so different. It is not that we are never sad, but in those moments of, st- of sadness, the Savior reigns, offering us hope of eternal life. For today, he reigns. For tomorrow, he reigns. We are called to repeat this. That's the sounding joy that the Savior reigns. So what song are you repeating today? Whatever song it is, I challenge you today to choose joy. To choose joy. <clears throat> I don't know who this is for but I'm going to say it anyway. Stop being cynical. Don't expect the worst. I, I think we, some of us expect the worst. We, we expect the worst and plan for the best or we, however that works. But some, it's, it's flipped. We just expect th- bad things to happen. But this morning, expect God to bring about good things in your life like he said he would and that he'll take care of the battles when they come. Stephen Furtick said this, cynicism isn't wisdom, it's a sickness. We choose faith over fear. We choose to live out of faith, which is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of our things not seen. So why are you living with bad hopes and falsified evidence about your life? You're not living in joy this morning. I wonder why. There it is. Don't be a cynic. Stop being cynical. Jesus said that he came to give you life abundantly, exceedingly over and above what you think you need or you want. Now, this is what God wills for you. Now, you may be looking around and find yourself not fulfilled, and maybe that is because you're trying to be fulfilled with the wrong things. It is a joy-filled life that we're, that we're, that we're called to, that, that Christ offers us, not a toy-filled life or a title-filled life or a career-filled life or any other thing that we put on a pedestal or dream board or we set up such lofty expectations in our mind. God wants joy for you today. So how do you choose joy? Don't you hate it when you're, when you're uh, watching something and they, it's a, like a, a diet pill or a workout machine and they say this little phrase, results may vary. I hate that, right? Because it's like, oh, we're going to pump this up and this one person lost 172 pounds in one week. And <laughs> no, that's, that's not true. But uh, you, you know what I'm talking about. But I hate that. I hate it when a product says that. I mean, if I buy a Chia Pet Bob Ross, I expect that Afro to be huge. I once tried it and and man, it is like little baby little sprouts and it didn't come up to anything. Well, when they say that, it means the results or experience that you have when using or doing this may be different from what is being advertised. Ain't that the truth? (laughs) It's warning you that you are what what they are talking about may not work well for you. It means that the results or experience that you have when using this or doing something may be different than what they're advertising. So I'm not going to stand up here and give you Pastor Andy's 10-step journey to choosing joy today. I'm not going to do it because the results may vary, right? But I am going to give you just one step. And if we stand on scripture and trust in God's word, there is one surefire way to find the fullness of joy that we're called to today. Are you ready for it? This is huge. Psalm chapter 16, verse 11. Psalm 16, 11. Get ready. I'm going to read from the New King James. I'm going old school this morning. You will show me the path of life in the second part. In your presence is fullness of joy. Joy to the world, the Savior reigns. In his presence, there is a fullness of joy. So you want my, my steps towards living a joy-filled life? Spend time in the presence of God. Take time to do it. You say, well, I don't, I'm too busy. I don't have time. That's hogwash. That's the best word I could come up with in the moment. I had a few others up there, but it's not true. 
The enemy wants to tell us we don't have time, but you have time. You make time for what you want to make time for, just how it is. You want, joy, you want to choose joy tomorrow? Spend time in the presence of God. You're going through a rough patch and you need that peace and that joy to, to fill you up? Spend time in the presence of God. What is that? I'm not going to tell you how it is for you. For me, I love worship music. I love turning on and just singing and, and, and joining in with that worship. And that fills me up with that joy. For you, it could be going for a walk and praying. For you, it could be on your, on your way to, to work hearing scripture read. You read these scriptures in, in the fullness of in his, his presence is the fullness of joy. I don't, I don't think we can truly find the fullness of joy anywhere else. No matter what we try. In his presence. And he's with us when we're singing. He's with us when we're reading his word. He's with us at home. He's with us here worshiping. He's with us on the way to work. He's with us at work. And no matter where we're at, this isn't a, a spot where the fullness of joy is. It says in his presence. And what does it say that his presence is? He lives in us. He gave us his Holy Spirit, the indwelling of us, Jesus in us. It's the great mystery is Jesus that lives in us, in his presence. When we are uh, in step with his spirit, in his presence is the fullness of joy. I don't know what, what song you're singing. I don't know how your heart's feeling this morning, but I do know this. The Savior reigns. Joy to the world even when things aren't settled. Joy to the world, even when things are isolated and we are socially distanced. I cannot wait until I can never say that, those two words together ever again. I'm not a socially distanced kind of person. Um, but joy to the world, the Lord has come. And joy to the world, the Lord is coming. Choose to be a, church, uh, uh, choose to be a person filled with joy. We have to spend time in his presence to be filled up with this joy. God wants joy for your life. The question is, are you going to take the time to do it? Are you going to take the time to spend in his presence? You need joy? Come and ask him for it. You need joy? You need help? You need help with where you're at right now? Spend time in his presence. Let his presence spark all the joy that you need. Because I believe that is the, the foundation of our joy. Let's pray. Father, this morning, we have so many things in our lives that um, threaten to take our joy, that threaten to um, steal our peace, that threaten to keep us focused on them. Lord, your word tells us in Psalm 1611 that in your presence there is the fullness of joy. God, help us all to stay in your presence, to get in your presence, to fight to be in your presence, Lord. Fight through all the distractions. Fight through all the frustrations. Fight through all of the, the circumstances to spend time in your presence. Lord, would you fill us up with your joy today? Thank you so much for sending your son so that that exact thing could happen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's